So welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be continuing covering the new bulk file format, and I'm going to be going over how you can use a downloaded bulk file to add new keywords, add new products, and create new ad groups into your existing campaigns. And we're also going to go over the new ID columns, which may be tripping you up if you've tried to do some of these very common processes in the new format. So let's dive into the bulk file. All right, so let's go into the sponsored product campaigns tab and go over some very common things that you might have done if you were familiar with the old format. However, if you are unfamiliar with bulk files at all, I think you will still find this very valuable. So this is the, again, the new format of the bulk file. And one common thing that a lot of people did prior would be to use the bulk file, like a full upload to add new keywords. And while this is still possible inside of the new format, there's a couple things that you want to take into consideration when you make these particular changes, particularly these ID columns right here. And actually they go all the way over here. So in the previous uh, file, the campaign ID was present. However, um, all of these ad group IDs, uh, the ad IDs, the portfolio ID was present prior, um, but you wouldn't have an ad ID, a keyword ID, and a product targeting IDs. Now, these IDs allow Amazon to reference specific things inside of your ad account. It actually works to speed up the processing power of the particular sheet. It is much easier now for them to go and find the actual thing that they need to make changes to. However, if you are unaware of how these function, you could be getting errors when you go to add you know, keywords or create additional things inside of your ad account. So I'm going to walk through how you might add a keyword to a specific campaign, then we'll go through how you might add an additional product into an ad group. And then lastly, I'll go through and show you how you might create um, another ad group inside of an existing campaign. If you are unfamiliar with bulk files, kind of the most important column to understand that will help you kind of speed up the learning process when it comes to this is the column B, which is the entity column. The entity column basically tells us what is on the each specific row. So you notice that you see campaign in the entity column here. Um, then we know that this row is kind of referencing a certain campaign. Think of it very much like if something exists in the bulk file because your bulk file is your entire ad account inside of a spreadsheet. So if something exists currently in your ad console, it will appear here in the bulk file and vice versa. And very similarly, how you would go into your ad account and you would like click into your campaign, you would click down into your ad group, and then you might click to find the products. All of those are on different levels. So it's very similar to that in that you have specific rows. The benefit of course is that we can scroll down and we see everything in one continuous page versus having to click and click and click and try and you know figure out where everything is. So bulk files are very valuable valuable for analysis, but they're also really great for making changes into your ad account. Maybe you found a new keyword and you would like to add that into your current campaigns. A uh, one great way to do that is a bulk file. So you would find whatever um, campaign you would like to put this keyword into and whatever ad group you would like to put this keyword into. Because think of it again, if something is contained within the ad account, it's present in the bulk file. So in the ad account, we add keywords into a specific ad group, and then we would be doing that inside of the bulk file. The best way to do this, so again, we would look at the entity rows, and um, we do have these campaign IDs and these ad group IDs that reference specific campaigns and specific ad groups. Although I don't know about you, I typically don't memorize a lot of these like numeric values inside of um, my account. So if you scroll all the way over here to the right, you actually have a campaign and ad group name informational column. Informational, it is for our benefit only and for that Amazon, we thank you. Um, so we don't actually have to memorize like what the ID columns are. You can quickly scroll through and say, okay, I would like to put the keyword into this campaign and this particular ad group. 
One very common thing that a lot of people would do when they are putting a keyword into an existing ad account is oftentimes in the old format, what we would do is we would put one row below and then you would simply copy and paste the previous row or any of the other keyword rows in that particular um, ad group and then you would scroll over and you would find that the keyword text so this keyword text here is like the actual keyword we're bidding on and they might change it so we might say that this is keyword one test of course that is not a really good keyword you would be putting a specific keyword and then they might change the bids um, to be you know whatever you want the bid for your new keyword to be and then you could re-upload this file that was the previous format and then there's two things that you're going to have to do in this new format to make um, this process work and actually have that keyword created in your ad account the first one is this operations column. And this is really important if you um, want a full breakdown on the operations column. I did a whole video specifically going over this, how it's used, why it's even here. Um, I will leave a link to that video down below. But the one thing that you need to know for this process is if there is something that is not currently existing inside of your ad account and you would like it to be created inside of your ad account, then you have to specify a specific operation or something that you would like to happen on the row that contains whatever the change is. So this is the row that we copied. And then again, we went through and we put it to just kind of like a test keyword and we changed our bid and this is what we'd like to create. So we have to specify create in the operations column. I remember I said there was two things. So this process, um, if you kind of understand operations, if you understand the old formatting, this might be pretty intuitive. But the one thing I find that is not intuitive that can trip you up is again, these ID columns. So these ID columns reference again, specific entities contained within your account. So notice on this row, because we just straight up copied something, um, there are two matching keyword IDs and that's not how it works. There is never two matching keyword IDs with an ad, the same ad group and the same campaign ID. Now we are putting this into this particular campaign and we're putting it into this particular ad group. So these IDs correctly need to remain the same because we need to reference those specific placements. However, we don't want to have any keyword ID inside of um, this keyword ID column. And in fact, to create a new entity at the keyword level, you would simply um, make sure that this is blank. So this would be um, the croc formatting if you wanted to create um, a brand new keyword inside of this particular ad group, all right? So now let's go over how you can add a product new SKU into an existing ad group. It is very much exactly the same as the keyword, only sort of some of the columns and references are slightly different, but I'm gonna go over it now. So a very common scenario that you would have prior would be, okay, um, maybe you switched out a SKU, or maybe you needed to add a new SKU into your existing ad groups for whatever reason. Maybe you realize like, oh no, I don't have the FBM SKU um, in there and I want to add that to all of the existing ad groups that contain, you know, my FBA SKU, something along those lines. In those particular cases, again, it would be very similar. Common practice would be to insert a row below and then simply take this particular um, row and then you would copy it, and then you would paste it. And then you would scroll over and find the column that contains the SKU. So that was SKU one, and maybe we need SKU two to appear here. And then again, it is exactly the same as when we created the keyword ID. You need to make sure you are filling out this operations column correctly. If you do not fill out the operations column correctly, the the operation you would like to have, the change you would like to have will not be processed. So again, we are creating something. It does not currently exist in our ad account. So we need to put create in this operations column. Now again, very similar to us creating the keyword. We are placing this particular product into this campaign and into this ad group. So the ID would remain the same. However, 
we do not want to have duplicate ad IDs in this particular case. And again, when you are creating a new product um, or putting a new SKU, you don't actually have to reference a specific ID. All right, so we went over how you can add keywords into existing ad groups and how you can add new products into your existing ad groups. So now let's go over how you can create a new ad group inside of a current running campaign. Okay, so let's scroll down um, and then find an ad group to duplicate. So again, I'm just gonna demonstrate on how like a previous process that you might have done um, in the old format and then we'll go over some of the things that you need to be aware of with the new format. Okay, so here's an ad group right here, and I know this from, again, the entity column because this one says ad group and then product ad and keyword. So I know that um, these are, this is my ad group, and then inside of this ad group, I have a new product, and then inside of these, I have a particular keyword. So I'm going to um, kind of demonstrate what you might have done in the old process. So in the old process, you would have just copied um, these particular rows, and then you might have pasted it right here and then you might have renamed your ad groups now the columns where the ad group names were previously are a little bit different so I'm first going to go over the operations column because it's going to be a really great placeholder for me and then I'll go over how you rename the ad groups in the new format and then I'll go through what you need to put in the ad group ID column so just like we did before, we need to put create on all of our new rows because this ad group is not currently existing inside of our account structure and we want to make it. So again, anything that you are making, you have to put create on all of those individual rows. So that is how um, you would use the operations column. And then let me just highlight this just so we can see like what rows we're looking at. And then again, we remember we're creating this product ad and we're creating these new keywords. So very similar to our process when we created new keywords and we created new ads or products inside of um, our existing ad groups, we don't want to have a specific keyword ID or ad ID references. Because again, those are already existing um, on different line items, so that's not gonna work when we update something. Now, you don't have to have an ad ID or a keyword ID specified when you create, again, a new product inside of your account or you put a new keyword inside of your account. However, when you create an ad group or when you create a campaign, you are required to submit an ad group ID. Now, again, this particular ad group ID is not going to work when we just copy it and paste it because remember, this is referencing another specific ad group. So that's not what we want to put here. However, um, we do need to give Amazon an ad group ID. So what in the world are we going to put there? Well, first, let's rename our ad group. So again, previously, what you might have done is you might have copied and pasted, and then you would just specify a new ad group name. Now, where the ad group name is located, again, remember, we have these reference columns over here, which is great, but that's not actually what Amazon is referencing because, again, these say informational only, so this is for our purposes. We don't actually have to worry about these columns whatsoever. Um, same with the performance columns. However, the one we do need to worry about is going to be this ad group name right here. So notice we have an ad group three and we have another ad group three. Um, we might say this is ad group three test or something like that. I really hope you are using good clean naming structure. Ad group three test is not going to be a good naming structure if this were an actual account and something that we actually wanted to keep track of. However, just for demonstration purposes, I'm putting something like that, okay? So that would be where we would put our new ad group name. So where, what in the world do we put inside of the ad group ID? What you do when you create a new campaign or a new ad group inside of your account is you actually put the text name inside of the specific ad group ID columns. So what I would do is I would simply decide what my new ad group name is going to be, and then I would simply copy and paste that again to my new ad group structure rows um, inside of, again, everything, and then I have to make sure I have create in the operations tab. And that's honestly all I have to do. Now, of course, this um, current structure 
other than um, the ad group name is exactly the same as I have up here that I've copied and pasted. Now it is again created inside of the same campaign that is specified by the campaign ID. So because we're putting it into an existing entity, we do need to reference that specific ID. Um, but again, we had to change it because we are creating this ad group. Now again, the specific products, so the SKU here, my keywords, my keyword bids are all exactly the same. If that's what you're looking to do, if you just wanna like duplicate something, um, that will work. But oftentimes what you'll want to do is maybe you wanna have the same product and maybe you don't. So very similar to when you updated like a SKU or updated a keyword, you might just um, put something else here and maybe I only want 20 cent bids and basically just put um, whatever keywords on these keyword rows very similar to what we did before so if I wanted to put SKU 1 and SKU 2 into this new ad group all I would have to do is again duplicate um, my product ad row now we've already deleted the ad ID and we've already um, specified the new ad group ID and we already have create here. So in this case, we can literally just duplicate it and then change this. Uh, maybe this was SKU1. If for some reason we wanted to put more keywords into this um, new ad group that we are creating, we could just insert two rows below and then we could go through and we could copy these paste these here and then just put our new keywords maybe this is keyword one and maybe this is keyword two and maybe we want a 50 cent bit here um, so you basically can just add the structure and then all you would have to do is take this file you would download it and then you would upload it into amazon and then those changes will take place in your ad accounts you would have again added a new product into an existing ad group you would have added a new keyword into an existing ad group and then we just created again and this new ad group with this new structure and again all of those changes would be made so if you have a whole bunch of changes and a whole bunch of new ad groups a whole bunch of new keywords you want to add i find that the bulk files are some of the most efficient ways to get that done so that's why again i find a lot of value in going through the learning process of learning this format but if you were previously using the old versions um, you might have tried this process of duplicating you might have gotten as far is figuring out that you need to put create but very possibly these ad ids could have been tripping you up and so i wanted to make a video um, going over this process and how you need to think about this um, on those levels hopefully that was helpful of course if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below um, i am going to be putting out a lot more content on the new formatting so if you have any pressing questions or things that you really need somebody to walk through with you please leave them down in the comments and as always, I will see you in the next one.